Get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is as follows. J rejects 0.05% of the parts on an assembly line. If he rejects four parts, how many did he examine? All right, so this is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then of course, we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go to take one more look at the question before I show you the answer. All right, so J rejects 0.05% of the parts on an assembly line. Now, just in case you don't know, an assembly line is maybe some sort of like belt with rollers or whatnot, like so, and there's parts going by, and here is J, he's looking at these parts, and um, uh, he rejects 0.05% of the parts that's going uh, past him. He's examining these parts. Now, if he rejects four parts, how many total parts did he examine. Now, the first thing that we want to consider is that we are dealing with a math word problem. So what should you do? So, well, maybe we'll just read the problem one time and then just kind of start doing stuff. No, 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 you don't want to do that. You always want to use the rule of three. So I've already read the problem a couple of times. And of course, I kind of clarified any aspects that you may have been confused about. But if you're reading a prompt for the first time, you got to make sure you totally understand what's going on. So if there's something like an assembly line or something like a part of the problem you don't understand and you are a math student, raise your hand, ask your teacher, clarify what's going on, you know, in the prompt. Because if you don't understand the problem, it's impossible for you to solve it. All right, now the next thing that we need to consider is that we are dealing with percent. So hopefully you have some pretty good percent skills, and if you don't, I'll give you some specific suggestions at the end of this video on how you can learn percent. It's not that difficult, but it's critically important. Matter of fact, all people, if they're gonna learn anything about math, uh, percent is probably right up there on the top of my list. But um, anyways, what do you think we should do here? Well, we have this problem, and we're saying, all right, well, J rejects 0.05% of the parts on the assembly line. If he rejects four parts, how many did he examine? Now, some of you already know what to do, okay? You probably could just hit your calculator out and calculate the correct answer, and that's fantastic. But even if you have the right answer and you know what to do, I'm going to really encourage you to write out these steps. Anytime you are doing mathematics, okay, always think about uh, putting your work on paper as if you're going to prove your answer to someone else, like maybe a teacher. All right, so let's go ahead and model the information in this problem and kind of distill it down to something maybe like this. Okay, so J, okay, is going to examine all these parts. Let's say this is the total number of parts that J examines, but we do know that 5% or 0.05%, excuse me, of these total parts that J examines, okay, is going to be equal to four, okay, because 0.05% uh, of the total parts, okay, we're taking 0.05% uh, of how many total parts he examined. Well, the problem says that uh, that's equivalent to four. So we need to kind of set up some sort of equation here to solve this problem. Now, if this part is confusing to you, well, what you want to do is go back and read the question again. And we can see here, if uh, J rejects 0.05% of the parts on an assembly line, if he rejects four parts, okay, so he rejects four out of the total, we're looking for the total number he uh, examined. Okay, so we need some sort of mathematical statement that effectively relates the problem, and hopefully you can see that this is what we need. Okay, so 0.05% of the total parts is equal to four. What we're looking uh, for here is how do we get this number, the total parts? Okay, so what I'm gonna be using here is some basic algebra. Now, the reason why I didn't say 
solve the algebra word problem is because a lot of people, first of all, when they hear uh, that word algebra, they're like, algebra, I don't like algebra. Uh, algebra is too hard. Well, that's the first reason. I don't like to intimidate or scare anybody off. Uh, you know, the, hey, let's do algebra to solve this problem because you don't necessarily need algebra. Okay, but algebra is such a wonderful tool. And if you plan on studying algebra, you will be using algebra to solve percent word problems. And it's really pretty easy. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and see how we're going to do this or how we're going to solve this problem using algebra. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you. Well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. So I'm going to let this variable x equal the, uh, or represent the total number of parts that J examined. Okay, because we don't know the total number of parts. So what we need is a variable to represent that amount. So I'm going to delineate this. Again, we're talking about writing out, showing our work. Because I'm pretty sure a lot of you were able to get your calculator out and just punch some numbers and get the right answer. That's fantastic. But let's suppose you were tutoring someone and someone says, hey, listen, I don't understand how you got the right answer. Can you teach me? Can you explain this to me? See, that's where it all makes a big difference in math, okay? If, if you really want to know if you understand something, if you can teach it, well, then that's pretty. Uh, that's a good indicator that you actually know it. And the best way to do math is on paper. So write out each step and be as clear as possible. All right, so we're going to let x equal the total number of parts that J examined. So instead of this right here, 0.05% of the total number of parts, we're going to replace this total parts with the variable x. So we're going to end up with this equation right here. 0.05% of uh, x is equal to 4. Okay, so effectively, we're going to be finding the percent of a number. Okay, 0.05% of this one number, whatever it is, is 4. All right, so the next question is, do you know how to solve this lovely algebraic equation? All right, now, if you want to see this, matter of fact, I jumped uh, forward a little bit too much here, but let's go ahead and talk about what we need to do. So in order to solve this equation, and I think this is where a lot of people may have been confused or maybe got a little bit tripped up, this decimal could confuse people. We have 0.05 percent. So when you take a percent of a number, right? So let's say you're looking for 14% uh, of 70, all right? So if you wanted to find 14% of 70, what is the procedure? What's the process where you're gonna change that percent to a decimal? So what you're gonna do is move the decimal point over two places to the left or divide by 100, but that's going to be equal to 0.14. So 14% you're gonna write as a decimal, 0.14 and you're gonna multiply that by 70, this is how you find the percent of a number. So you got to be very cautious here because our percent is 0.05. And I think a lot of people, you know, they'll get confused with this decimal. Uh, and they'll be like, wait, I've already got 0.05%. I got to change this thing to a decimal. So how do I do that? Well, I just basically told you how to do it. You can move the decimal point over two places to the left, but effectively that's the result of divided by 100. So let's go ahead and see that right now. Okay, so 0.05% of x, we want to uh, change this percent to a decimal. So when you take 0.05, again, feel free to use your calculator. Divide by 100, you're going to get 0.0005x is equal to 4. Now, again, some of you out there could be like, oh, I could just move the decimal point over two places to the left. And you can, but you got to be careful here because you need to put in two zeros there. So 0 0.0005. And if you have your calculator and you're just not quite sure, always double check yourself. Use your calculator, 0 0.05 divided by 100, 0 0.0005x is equal to 4. 
Okay, so at this point, this should be a pretty straightforward algebraic equation to solve for x, because if we figure out what x is equal to, well, this is the number of parts that J uh, examined, the total number of parts. All right, now let's go ahead and finish this problem up because this is super easy. So here is our equation, 0.0005x is equal to four. So let's just do a quick review, right? So this 0 0.005 was what? Well, let me kind of erase this. This was 0.05%, okay? So we changed this 0.05% into a decimal and we're going to multiply this 0.05% uh, by this number, okay, x. We don't know what it is, but we do know this represents the total number of parts that Jay examined, and uh, he rejects 0.05% of these parts, and he rejected four, all right? So we have this equation, 0.005x is equal to four. So to solve for x is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 0.005, you can see that work right here. And then again, we just go into our calculator, take four, divided by 0 0.0005, and you get 8,000. So x is equal to 8,000. Now remember, you gotta always check your variables or what you uh, establish them as, right? So x equals the total number of parts. So obviously J uh, examined 8,000 parts. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.